and welcome to Reads Reads, Spider-Man and Crawl Space Edition. Check us out at thespidermancrawlspace.com. Well, I'm here to review, of course, 88 Bay, the Spider-Man Beyond uh, one-shot about the return of the Slingers by Thorne and Palo. So let's get right into the pros with this quick little review. So first of all, the pros, I really like the fact the story really focused on Hobie Brown, where he's been, how he's taken back up the mantle of the Hornet, which of course was the suit he designed back in the original Identity Crisis, the fact that he's opened up his own company to really deal with a lot of the problems that happen after supervillain fights. I really like the story that it actually focuses on the fact that even after all the battles with supervillains, even with, you know, damage control and a few other things, that a lot of people suffer a lot more, you know, trauma. As they always say, is the suit, the guy wins and everybody goes back to their lives. But the truth is, as we know in society, that's not true. And I really like that Thon really focuses on that aspect of where Hobie Brown's really trying to do with his company and as well as his role as the Hornet and everything to look forward to actually dealing with a lot of the problems about people dealing with trauma after super villain or you know cosmic battles it really brings a humanization really kind of gives a nice direction to hobie brown um now that he's beyond the prowler since of course Miles morale's uncle is really kind of taken back up the prowler and normal continuity and as somebody who was a fan of the Slingers right after Identity Crisis in the late 90s, which, let's face it, guys, I'm that old, um, I really do like how they uh, come back in about how they seek out everything with Hobie, with Cassie, and looking for Ricochet and kind of come up with all the pieces, as well as dealing with the buyout of his company, even though he makes some money with the fact that he doesn't like the way things have been going on with Beyond. And, of course, he sees all the issues with the superhero battlings and purchases of the Spider-Man license, which is a nice little part of the storyline. And the fight is actually pretty good, and I really like the fact that Hobie kind of reassembles the slingers even though he kind of gets swayed into the beyond corporation shenanigans but that kind of leads us to the cons really um as a fan of the slingers and someone who talked to joe harris the original writer of the series and on a regular basis back when the series launched and has been a fan of the characters even when peter david brought them back in his scarlet spider issue this issue really is kind of just kind of a one shot to see if us slingers fans would really like to support the story and why it's there and it kind of gives a nice little impact of where the slayers the Slingers could go uh, once Prodigy is read in turn this. This issue really doesn't have very really much impact on anything of the current Spider-Man Beyond story. It just leads a little bit more of the purchasing of the superheroes and the corporations as well as kind of saying where Hobie Brown's been since Dan Slott left the book of you know the uh, Peter Parker industry. So there's not really a lot into it. While the artwork is nice and the story is a little fun, this is really pretty forgettable of an issue. It's, it's kind of enjoying and kind of a little small love letter to us Slingers fans, but there's really Really not much to come into this story and I'm going to be pretty kind on this issue and just give it an even C. Um, as fan service it works. As a fan of the of Hobie Brown and the pr original Prowler I like it. I really like the characterization and I think the voices matched up pretty good for the storyline but at the same time is it really was wondering what is the relevance of this story and it really doesn't have very much on it. So the 88 Bay issue is only going to get a C even for me. It's not bad but there's not much else for me to say with it. And speaking of that, guys, I know I talked about Savage Spider-Man number one. I'm actually going to table that review for uh, until the current storyline gets a little farther on in due to time constraints as well as getting a hold of my digital print issue. So I'm going to hold off on the uh, Savage Spider-Man review for a later time. But on the meantime, though, if you want to get more, especially with the current conclusion as we get closer and closer to the end of Spider-Man Beyond, please check us out at SpiderManCrawlspace.com for your latest news, previews, and reviews from my fellow crawl spacers as we review through the Spider-Man Beyond and leading to the upcoming relaunch under Zeb Wells and John Romita Jr. And on that note, guys, I hope everybody has a fantastic week, a wonderful uh, time, and I will see everyone on the Crawl Space.